Hello, welcome back for our next episode of Elite Babeskar. I'm excited to see uh, how our crew deals with uh, some things that are going to happen tonight. It's going to be a blast, you could say. Um, before we jump into all of that, though, I want to say a few words about our sponsors. Uh, let everybody introduce themselves uh, and then we'll, we'll jump into it. So first of all, our sponsors who are awesome. Uh, Fundamental RPG, it's a simple D20 system that you can use for uh, anything uh, that you want to do. Uh, it's not tied to a genre, so you can use, use it for uh, uh, sci-fi or high fantasy and everything in between. Um, we've pretty much done everything in between and high fantasy and sci-fi on that system on this channel over the last couple of seasons. Uh, but you can pick that up on Amazon if you like the physical copy. If you prefer a digital version that you can use on your phone or tablet or PC, uh, you can pick that up at coffee.com slash raven, like it's spelled at the bottom of the screen. Also, uh, Die Hard Dice, they sell amazing polymer and metal die sets uh, and accessories. They are absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend going and checking them out at dieharddice.com. And if you use the code BLACKFEATHER, uh, it's all one word with a capital B, you can get 10% off of your entire order. Uh, one thing in particular I recommend checking out is this di uh, Winter's Embrace Dire D20. Uh, it looks like this. I've been using it this season for various roles and it's it's a heavy giant metal d20 so like that alone is enough reason to go check it out but it's it's very satisfying to roll and it's sparkly and i love it so go check it out um aside from that if you want to catch up on this show or any others that we have on the channel you can do so at the fantasy network at watch.thefantasy.network uh all that said and done we're gonna do some intros so uh starting at the top left v plays uh anaka go check out her stuff at Peppero draws uh like it's spelled there on the screen she's awesome uh uh nikki who normally plays ilsa uh, should be joining us a little bit later um but go check her stuff out at Janie potts uh 7575 uh on twitter and um, yeah, I'll, I'll let her do more of her intro when she joins us later. Next, let's hop over to Jordan. Tell us a little bit about Nadara and yourself. Hello, my name is Jordan, AKA Sassy with Sander, and I play Nadara. Um, she is, I can never say it right, but she's a Brock. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a scout and she's obsessed with all things Kyber crystals. I'll leave it at that. Um, you can catch me on the tweeters at Sassy with Sander. You can also check out my Etsy store where I sell sparkle cloaks at Red's Wardrobe on Etsy. Awesome. Uh, next, let's hop up to Matt. Tell us a little bit about Jai and yourself. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a content creator of various stripes, uh, and I play Jai Soren, the son of a clone commando. A uh, Mandalorian who's having to grow up from being a sweet summer child and hates it. Uh, but I guess hit a nice little watershed moment uh, last week when I didn't murder the fucking Saxon. I call that growth. Uh, yeah, that is fantastic. That's Jai. Awesome. Uh, next, uh, Par, tell us a little bit about uh, Zadu and Gracus uh, and yourself. Uh, I'm I'm Par. I'm uh, sort of new to TTRPGs. I've only been, uh, been at it for two years. Two years, I think. Uh, I play Rakus, a uh, Sith Ewok. You know, Sith Ewok extraordinaire. And I play Zadu, the master of found families, uh, Kashyyyk, Mandalorians, and Locke are his three so far and uh that's it we we'll keep it short and concise awesome uh and uh nikki welcome in uh could you tell us a little bit about uh ilsa a stormtrooper school dropout who is um learning to use the force um, Imperial roots, I guess. I don't. Yeah. I didn't write it down. <laughs> Just... No worries. Um, awesome, and, and also has become very fond of uh, uh, wrecking Imperials' days recently. Uh, 
with with said force powers. Yes. Um, it's a hobby. <laughs> it's a it's a good hobby. Um, that, I guess that just leaves me. So I'm Raven. I'm the creative director for the Raven Evermore, which is my brand for all the various things that I do, most of which are tabletop related uh, or adjacent. Uh, my link tree is there in chat. If you can't see chat, if you're watching this later on the Fantasy Network, uh, you can find that at linktr.ee slash the Raven, like it's spelled below my face here, on the, the overlay. Um, and then to quick reference for everybody uh matt you currently have an advantage i currently have a crit uh looks like that's all we've got on the board at the moment uh if you would like to give advantages or disadvantages to our lovely cast here uh you can do so at coffee.com slash raven uh like it's spelled at the bottom of the screen uh you can also subscribe to the channel uh which will get you some other nifty stuff uh and you can uh depending on on the tier that you subscribe to um you can do advantages, disadvantages, crits, or uh, an asset or a challenge, um, in addition to being able to do that just through direct donations as well, if you prefer. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can check out those tiers at coffee.com slash Raven. Again, like it's spelled at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you don't know what an asset or challenge is in these terms, uh, an asset basically makes the game easier for the cast. Uh, it gives them a single use item, uh, that will help get them out of a jam or uh, just makes the, the situation generally easier. Um, they can kind of decide what they want that to be. And if you go with a challenge, I get to make their lives more difficult. Uh, so by adding an environmental uh, uh, hindrance or challenge uh, or more enemies or things like that. So that's pretty cool. It's a way that you can increase or decrease the difficulty level of, uh, of the game. Uh, and then I also play everybody else in the universe uh, for uh, this campaign, including Kieran Lal, who is a former Jedi who uh, got hit by a Trank Dart and is currently sleeping that off uh, on the ship uh, after some some strange, uh, you know, circumstances. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, uh, last week, you all got back to the ship, getting ready to, to take off after... You know, pointing the ship in the direction of uh, one of the big, mysterious-looking uh, interdictor cruisers uh, that was out there. Um, but unfortunately, the hangar bay doors are closed and locked, uh, and an explosion happened somewhere else on the ship right as we sort of uh, ended the session. Um, so as that, you know, shockwave sort of of the explosion wears off and... Um, you're all still alive. Uh, nothing seems to have happened in the hangar bay. What's the what's the reaction? What are what are you all doing to try to solve well, this riddle? First of all, I am immediately suspicious that you pointed out that you still have a crit and that we only have an advantage on our side. Nothing to be concerned about there at all. Uh, of course but, not. Once the once the explosion like rocks through us, Jai's just gonna like yell out like Zadu. Can you still fly this thing? Yes, of course. It's okay. You do that. I'm going to get the door. All right. He just like stops and just like. Be right back. Uh, and he's going to sprint back down the ramp and go find the nearest control panel outside. Uh, it is right next to the door heading out to uh, one of the hallways that goes deeper into the ship. Oh, cool. I'm uh, just going to sprint over to that and do a computer on it. All right, go ahead and roll use computer. 25. 25. Um, let's see. With a 25... I do still have force points. <laughs> like You sound very, very uh, cautious about this one. Do I need to pad it a little bit? Um, I was trying to decide how... how difficult uh the mando could have made it versus someone else um no with that particular one i think a 25 would would cut it for their skill level okay. um if it had been someone else it would have been harder but i was i was going through my brain like like who locked it again it was that particular mando uh the the death watch guy so uh, so yeah know, he death watch he doesn't know shit he knows how to <laughs> shoot 
He's just a meathead. It's whatever. Yeah. So 25. Yeah, that, that'll that work. Um, you're able to uh, disengage the uh, the lock and open up uh, the doors. So Zadu, you will uh, be able to pilot the ship out. Are there any more ships in the hangar? Uh, let's roll to find out. What shall I roll to find out? Uh, oh, I'm going to roll. Sorry. Oh, OK. Uh, there are four TIE Fighters. Just regular old TIEs? Yeah, just just standard TIE Fighters. We don't need one of those pieces of junk in our collection. Uh, if they were fancy, we'd see about it. Uh, all right. Uh, then I'm just going to run and jump back on the ship. Run back up the ramp. Okay. And check in with everybody else who's on the ship. <laughs> it's like, Ilsa, you all right? I'm fine. I'm going to go make some tea. Okay, good. Elsa's doing good. Love it. Uh, new person. Hi, I'm Jai. Nadara like looks behind her as if you're talking to someone else and goes, "Oh, hi, hi. I'm Nadara." <laughs> cool. Welcome on board the boat. We're all cool here. There's dogs and an insane droid. And if you need a workshop, it's through that door. Uh, Ilsa's making tea, and there was rumors of cake in the kitchen. And there's I'm cake? sure there's an empty room. And where's the cake? Uh, just so of... you know, Ilsa decorated. Oh yeah, and go ahead. Describe your cottage core. It's very good. Oh, you can describe. That's fine. Uh, it's it's in the very well decorated kitchen right back through there. Ilsa's making tea. She is very proud of her amazing decorations. Where are our force people? Where's Anaka and where's where's Kieran? I assume Anaka's like taking care of Kieran or something. Is that how we're hand waving that? Um, uh, yeah, Kieran is is unconscious uh, on one of the beds. Uh, I don't know that Anaka would be necessarily taking care of yeah, Kieran. No, that felt bad as soon as I said it. <laughs> um, Gregus. Gracus, maybe. No, we you mentioned the force users, but you didn't mention Gracus, you know. Oh, I, I assumed Gracus <laughs> was around. I was getting to him. Uh, all right, so I I don't know. Um, I'm going to look in on Kieran real fast. Okay. Hold on. Am I? Hold on. I'm going to at least look in. Um, <laughs> Are you? <laughs> well, I'm seeing if I actually have any sort of medicine that means that this is a useful thing for me to do. Um, I see. I don't, I'm not skilled in treat injury and I don't have a lot of points in it, like none. Um, I'm going to just look in and see if she's. So we saw a lot of weird stuff on this cruiser and it hasn't all been a pleasant experience. Uh, How's she look? How's Kieran doing? Uh, well, as you you poke your head in and and uh, check on her, um, she's actually starting to stir a bit. Um, sort of, you know, that um, eyes almost closed, but not not quite. Kind of just a little bit open, and that that sort of early morning groan uh, when you wake up way too early and. Uh, you're mad at your body for waking you up that early. Um, it's sort of the expression that the Kieran has is sort of, oh, what happened? You know, kind of mumbling. Uh, you got darted by a evil dude, that really creepy one. And then he wasn't there when we came back to rescue you from your suicidal last stand that will not be repeated in this family. Um, she sort of bolts up in, in the bed and then immediately grabs her head and goes, oh, no, that was a bad idea. Uh, Good. Falls right back down. Um, and kind of holds up a finger like, like you know, hold, hold on a second. Um, all right. Um, one, what? Not suicide last stand. I was supposed to be in the turbo lift. Two, where are we? Uh, what's happening? 
we're back on the boat and we're leaving. Uh, and also that cruiser with the evil Sith guy is going to go plowing into an interdictor cruiser and hopefully make a real big explosion. That sounds like a fantastic plan. I know. I thought of it. It was great. We definitely didn't have any other issues. And Anaka definitely did not feel the Sith jerk ass running in the direction of our ship. So it's probably fine. Oh, good. Average mission then. Yeah. Hey, um, weird question. Weird question. Just based on some context clues. And I don't even know if this is possible or if the force works this way. You're not possessed right now and I don't need to put you out in airlock, right? There's just like just pause. Hey, pausing's a bad answer. Jai, uh, one, I don't think you can possess someone through the force that way. I mean, I guess maybe it's possible. That sounds like a Sith thing. Definitely Jai something gives her a Sith a thing. Wide open, like, look through so, his helmet, just like. Mm -hmm. But Jai, if I was, I probably wouldn't tell you. Yes, but we also wouldn't have this conversation. So I feel better about it. Cool. Rust up, get some sleep. Uh, Zadu's flying. So we're probably fine. I guess there's a whole enemy fleet around us, but that's whatever. Okay. Th thanks. Uh, it sort of just slumps back down into the hey, bed. If you don't get better, who do I call to fix you? Because you know it's not going to be a Naka. <laughs> She just sort of props her head up again for a second. It's like, a medical droid? Hmm. All right, fair enough. I bet they have one of those back on our, back on our destroyer. I'm sure, I'm sure one of the other Mandos got one on board our other ship. Jai's just like wondering, it's just like all of a sudden Jai's just like, did they even have logistics people? Why have I not asked this question before? <laughs> <laughs> and then Jai's going to walk up to the cockpit. Just like, all right, cool. Get some sleep. And he's going to walk up to the... Can I... subtly lock her door? <laughs> uh, you can certainly try. Neat. How do I do that in a subtle way? Uh, that would be a stealth roll. Oh, good. Actually, no, that's amazing. I'm very good at stealth. I'm fantastic at stealth. Yeah, uh, you lock the door, no issues whatsoever. She has no idea. Perfect, good. I mean, uh, unless she eventually tries to leave the room, then obviously she will, but she doesn't know that I, you locked it. Can I actually, like, since I assume that I have rewired all the computers on this ship by this point, can I just, like, put in, like, a little subroutine that, like, if she tries to open the door, it'll just ping my comm? Yeah. That'll just dial me instead? Yeah, that's totally fine. Cool. Um, Jai's gonna make his way up to the cockpit, I guess. See, let, let's see what some other people are doing right now. I feel like I just talked a whole lot. <laughs> You're good. Uh, yeah, in the cockpit is uh, Zadu, and I'm gonna assume Locke, uh, who is uh, right next to you, Zadu, going, I am very happy to see you, Master. You were missed. Oh. The little, like, uh, non-synchronized blinking of his uh, of his little eyes there. Oh, well, thank you very much, Slark. It's good to be back. I I killed many stormtroopers in your absence. That's... Well, yeah, it, it, I actually assume you'd do that. <laughs> Had fun, then. Yes, uh, one of their heads exploded. It was very uh, exciting. Very nice. So, how's how have things been going? <laughs> um, about as well as normal, I think, by your standards. So not great, then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's good to know that. Well, at least we still have the ship. Honestly, I thought. Might have exploded and we'd be on some other ship by now. Uh, it has come close, perhaps once or twice. Uh, we got a bigger ship. What? The big, uh, 
Why can I never remember the name and the model of this ship? Venator? Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, th th we got a uh, Venator. An for entire, the Mandos. An entire Venator? How long was I gone? Uh, and GM can't remember the exact number of like weeks and days, uh, but Locke knows like down to the minute uh, and gives you a precise countdown, even like even down to the second. Yeah, Zadu laughs, but it's definitely the sort of laugh that kind of like trails off into like, oh, I'm a little disturbed <laughs> by, <laughs> by the passage of time. <laughs> That's fair. It's great. <clears throat> yep. No, that's, yeah, oh, lovely. Big win, big win. <laughs> big win. Yes. Oh, there are also messy, slobbery, uh, small four-legged creatures on the ship now. Oh, we run a zoo now. I suppose that might be what humanoids call it, organics. Um, the Ilsa is the one who, who brought them. I don't remember I don't remember her having a thing for animals what else have I missed um and, and Locke like proceeds to basically give you the, the summary of the like the last season of the show <laughs> uh in, in like rapid succession with very few like actual breaks so it's just like this sort of stream of consciousness of everything that's happened over the last season Wow, Sith Ewok and Jai being more assertive. Shame about Mookso. One of these days we'll cross paths again. Interesting. Oh. And Anaka seems a little warmer? I'm not sure, though. I wasn't here for all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think, I think Locke puts it as like, Anaka is having more fun. Well, that's good to hear. All right, all caught up. Um, yeah, and then uh, Jai, I would assume that you probably show up on, on the, the bridge or in the cockpit uh, sometime during all of that. I'm not going to interrupt Locke's role. Like, he's just going and Jai's like, slips into another chair and pulls up the sensors so that he can like record the cruiser crashing into the interdictor. Okay. He just really feels like this is going to be worth worth the views, really. <laughs> Should I circle or? Uh, well, we're going to draw attention, so maybe just like take us hmm I'm going to real quick describe the whole, like, sensor blackout that had happened in the whole sensor system. Okay. And I figure maybe the systems recorded the moment when we, like, crossed the boundary and could suddenly get, like, sensor data. Uh, yeah, you can have, like, a, like a rolling sensor uh, recording of everything. Yeah, and so I'd just be like, just fly out to about this point so we can still, like, see everything and get sensor readings because if we go past that it's not going to work but then we can also just get out of here real quick yes so sounds like a plan <laughs> jai sword or should i call you captain how <sighs> <laughs> i've missed you my friend ah uh, missed you too zadu <laughs> Things got weird, man. Ilsa, Ilsa threw down with a Jedi Master. Like, just walked up into his school at lunchtime in the cafeteria and threw down. What? And Jai's going to send him the video. <laughs> <laughs> what? Zadu goes from... It, like, everyone else's reaction was like, this is cool. Zadu's fully like concerned parent. <laughs> One of us needed to be really, and it wasn't gonna be Jai. <laughs> what? 
Why? Okay, look, she got all force magic-y and has a lightsaber now. You remember that. And What? Yeah. <laughs> and it seems like it's kind of gotten to her a little bit and she's threatened to kill planets. It's a whole thing. She offered to kill Indor for Gracchus. Kill planets? Yeah, so we kind of figured that maybe having a Jedi Master um, show her the error of her ways was a good decision. And Anaka used the opportunity to rob them blind of some really valuable things, apparently. So we can't go back to Yavin. And also the Jedi may hate us. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, normal road trip. No. <laughs> what? Has anyone talked to Ilsa about this? Why? Destroying a planet? That is a big leap. That is a huge leap. Oh, she may have gotten mad at me when I made her get rid of a person eating plant off of the ship and then stunned her dog. It was a really stressful day and I was busy blowing things up again. Uh, oh, okay. Look, we desperately need an adult in this ship again, and really glad you're back, buddy. Uh, where, where to where to even start? <laughs> where to even start with all of this? Destroying a planet. She said a lot of things. Oh, sure? oh, Here's a fun thing. Good, good, fun thing, though. Good, fun thing. We are actively making plans to go really embarrass her horrible uppity parents in their house in the heart of the Empire Bastion. It's fine. I, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about what your definitions of good and fun are well if it's if it's if it's between making her parents embarrassed and oh my goodness the sith went to murder us to death i'm gonna take the good teen drama because we've had a long like month or two or three it felt like a, a very long time for me I felt like a year and a half or so, honestly, but... Okay, yeah, wow. <laughs> I see time has gotten away from you, too. Yeah. Um, well, this is a lot that needs to potentially be unpacked at some point. At some point, but right now, right now, what I think we should do is see if Ilsa can whip up some popcorn uh -huh. and bring everybody that's currently conscious up to the bridge to watch two ships collide and blow up. Because that just seems like good family fun. She's actually cutting slices of cake and arranging um, them on a giant platter with, oh, with the sleeve. Better. With like the fancy silverware and like napkins are folded nice. Okay. You you want to watch two, on sh <laughs> two ships collide. I understand oh. that these people are our enemies, but also that's a lot of people dying. Okay, yes. You're right. Well, okay. Actually, mm, you say that. I don't know that there was anybody left alive on that cruiser, really. I think that Sith dude was eating them. Um, I don't know if Jai actually has the all the pieces to that. Eating them? Um, what? Reality yeah, I that don't... I stepped into. <laughs> uh, no, roll that, roll that back. I don't think Jai actually has the pieces for that. Uh, that's I fair. Don't, there were a whole lot of corpses on that cruiser already, so I don't know. There's hardly anybody left. Gracchus and Anaka didn't see anybody on the bridge. 
And who even knows where they called in to tech support? Oh, that was offsite for sure. Oh, good. Yeah. So, yeah, they called offsite for tech support, most likely, uh, which we should get that number and just hold on to that. <laughs> that could be useful inside man. Uh, but, <laughs> but more to the point, there's like Zadu the sensor blackout that those weird interdictors are making blocks out the background radiation of the universe. That's not okay to just leave around. That's very concerning. So we're going to blow one of them up with another ship, Mm -hmm. open up a hole, maybe page the New Republic that they have a problem. I don't know. They... Different things are in motion. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the new Mando flagship, introduce you again to everybody, uh, introduce our new friend to everybody, uh, the new friend you found on board. That That's cool. Uh, and um, get on with the business of restoring Mandalore. And let the Empire and the New Republic fight it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, sounds like a plan. I need some time to process everything. Fair. Um, we could all use a vacation. Yes, sounds like. Beach day. You know what? <laughs> you know what? That's Beach what we're day. doing. We're going to go. We're, we'll go back. We'll watch the show. We'll maybe start a war. We'll go back to the Mando flagship. We'll introduce everybody. And then our crew will go on a beach day. I don't think I've ever even been to a beach, actually. I've heard the sand is real coarse and gets everywhere, but other than that, it's fun. Wow, yeah. You know, it's not smooth at all. Uh, speaking of, of the, the ships, I do need a pilot roll from Zadu to 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 get off of this this uh, cruiser. Oh, have we not left yet? <laughs> I, I figured this conversation happens like over the course of of that, but I just uh, I didn't want to interrupt for the roll because y'all were kind of on a on a good roll there. No pun intended. Twenty five. Yeah, oh, you're you're totally praise. fine. You uh. You are able to leave the cruiser, no issues whatsoever, uh, and get to that spot that you wanted to get to to watch everything sort of happen. Um, and uh, the camera is gonna gonna pan away from our crew here for a moment and go onto the bridge of that cruiser, uh, where Saxon has blown a hole in the window of the bridge and gotten on board um, and is frantically working with the Death Watch guy to try and right the ship, so to speak. Um, and uh, as the ship gets closer, um, there is communication happening between them and the uh, the Star Destroyer uh, that, that you've sent the ship towards. Um, and they are, are frantically trying to get control enough of the ship to steer it away while the, uh, the interdictor is using their tractor beams to try to push them away. Um, it unfortunately does not have the spectacular crash and explosion that you were going for. However, uh, those, those big domes with the weird like satellite dish looking things on them uh, all along the side. Um, it, it's it's like a, how to describe this. Uh, you, you can't hear it because it's space. So sound doesn't really carry. But imagine for a second that you could hear in space. It is the loudest scraping, most god awful metal on metal crushing noise as this cruiser just uh, completely crushes those domes and just rips like this giant tear down the side of that Star Destroyer. 
Um, and it sort of ends with both ships just sitting still, venting Atmo, and uh, fires happening. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you've successfully disabled it. It's not exploded, but it is disabled. I, I feel like Jai did like page everybody who wanted to come up to the bridge to watch and hopefully like, hopefully cake was involved. Uh, did the cake come up or did you set the table for it? Um, If he, did she know everybody was going up to the bridge? I think I probably did like a ship wide, like bing bong. Okay. Then she, <laughs> you know what she got? She has like a tray that's floating. Yes. Love it. And you know, it's, it's decorated really fancy. <laughs> way too fancy for the ship and there's <laughs> enough plates and for everybody to have cake i love that uh then then when it actually happens jai is just like slice of cake into his mouth and just like hmm that didn't blow up quite like i wanted it to don't forget your napkin mm, thank you also uh, hey, Zadu. Nudge us just a little bit, and he's gonna point like out the direction that's the sensor shadow, like wherever that boundary is. Not just that way a little bit. Let's see if anything's changed. Okay. I will not just that way. All right, as you do. Uh, yeah. If, if, Sensors are, are normal. The, all the signals have been restored. Awesome. Anyone have a better destination in mind than back to the Mando Destroyer? Which needs a name. I'll bring that up to Ben. <laughs> um, well, yeah. No. Yeah, I, I am also curious. Uh, before before you do get underway, I'm curious what everyone's reactions to that uh, sort of explosion ish uh, collision, we'll call it. Um, what are your reactions to that that collision? Um, oh, also, uh, uh, Kieran does try to leave the room uh, with the call of everybody to come up to the bridge for cake. <laughs> Uh, Jai definitely like when when the when it pings to his comps be like, hey, we'll send some cake in. You just take it easy, take a nap. Everything's chill. Uh, <laughs> like, okay. You said you needed to take a nap and have a rest. I'm just ensuring you get the opportunity to do that. We're gonna be home soon. You're worried I'm possessed by a Sith, aren't you? Little bit, little bit, and Anaka's broody somewhere. So. Chill out. All right, that's fair. Uh, a, a corner piece, please. Yep. <laughs> she cuts the call <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, what about everybody else's reactions? Uh, Gracus is loving it. <laughs> Absolutely loving it. <laughs> oh, I like figured like a kid in a candy store, like pressed up against the glass <laughs> <laughs> to take in every detail. <laughs> I love that. that is... How about Nadara? Nadara is sitting at the table and I know that there's like silverware and stuff, but Nadara this whole time is not paying attention to anybody and is solely focused on the cake. And instead of using utensils, she's literally grabbed it with her fist and is looking at it, but like picking out like the parts that she likes. So if there's sprinkles, she's eating all the sprinkles first. And then she's going to use her finger to eat all the icing. And then she's going to shove the rest of the cake in her mouth. But in the middle of this, this like explosion happens as she looks up and goes, that is a mess. And then continues eating her cake. <laughs> so um, Ilsa's going to give her a napkin. Like, just keep handing them to her. <laughs> Nadara is literally making this giant bib blanket of napkins. <laughs> She's not wiping her hands, though, or her face. Like, just covering herself in napkins. Oh, 
Oh, but it. are crumbs getting on the floor? That's the important question. Nadara's not paying attention, so probably. Okay, she's gonna, Elsa's gonna like look really unimpressed at the explosion and then go get a broom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, goodness. All right. Um, well, in that case, I, I think, yeah, you are, are good to lay in a course and. Uh, I, I would like to back. try one other thing. Okay. Now, now that the sensors work outside of that bubble, um, I want to. <laughs> oh gosh, this is bad. Uh, I want to ping a tight beam message uh, back to Yavin Four. Oh no. Okay. And I, I want to just be like, I, I want to, I, I want to mask it a little bit and just be like, your stolen goods are on indoor. I said I was going to get the New Republic involved. They can handle this problem. We're going to the beach. Oh, Lord. I mean, this... War, 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 I mean, war. at this point, the New Republic is basically like the rebellion with a fancier title. <laughs> yeah, sure. But they're used to this. They have bigger <laughs> ships than they have more ships than we do. That is technically true. You are correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. <laughs> and, 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 and as capable as Mandos are of taking care of magic people, it is not our job to deal with the Sith. It's the Jedi's job. They're the ones who have beef with each other. The rest of us just get caught in the middle. And unless we're being paid, that ain't our worry. I mean, that's, that's fair. Um, I do need a deception roll because... Last I checked, you hadn't <laughs> launched holocrons onto the moon. <laughs> no, I don't want a Naka to actually murder me. <laughs> or Ilsa to really try to murder me when I take away her teaching tool. I mean, that's fair. 22. 22. Uh, it's convincing enough, at least, for them to send out, like, some scouts. Yeah, they'll like send an X-Wing or something and they'll throw a fit and then the problem's not ours to deal with until we get paid or until the plot brings us back here somehow. Yeah. <laughs> or Jai does not actually think about that second one. That would be weird. <laughs> That's fair. I was going to say, or, or until the Sith uh, make it your problem. Well... Look, that's gonna happen, but that's also <laughs> probably because one of them's on our boat with us, but whatever. Don't say that. Who, <laughs> who's to say, really? Who, who's to say? Don't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you are able to make the jump to light speed and get away uh, while this little Sith, uh, small Sith uh, Imperial fleet here is... Um, sort of regrouping and uh, figuring out wh why the heck did one ship just run into another ship? <laughs> nice. it's like we were sitting still. How did this happen? Um, Imperial pilots, man. Yeah, they're, 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 they're something. Um, where are you headed to from here? Uh, I, I know you eventually want to get back to the, the Star Destroyer, the, the Mando Star Destroyer, but are, are you going straight there or is there any like stop that you wanted to make along the way or anything like that? I, at one point there was talk about going after a Sith temple, but that was Anaka and Ilsa's story. So maybe not that right now. Okay. So I, I don't know. Probably we actually know where one is. We got coordinates for one at some point. I think Anaka has them. I vaguely remember this. I think that was it, it a, that never, was a while back. It is. It's one of those side quests that's buried way down near the bottom of the journal. Yeah, we'll, we'll get around to it if we need to. <laughs> we we had a lot of adventures on Yavin that really distracted us. That's fair. Um, I, I think that was kind of the uh, the idea of like go to Yavin or go to Sith Temple. It was like one or the other. Uh, I mean, technically, you could still go to that. It's just I yeah, think that's. It was, I think that's our progress line there. If, if I remember right, it was to find something to help Ilsa learn more Force stuff. 
Yeah. But we got that with the holocrons, maybe, so... Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, heading straight back to the Star Destroyer, then? I guess. Unless anyone yeah. has any other thing they want to do. Nadara, do you have anywhere you need to be? Anywhere where there are kyber crystals, I would like to be. Well, we have a bunch of force people on the boat, so there's kyber crystals kind of everywhere. Maybe don't touch their kyber crystals. Some of them get <laughs> real touchy. Well, I want my own. Didn't you pick up a toy? I did. I'll be back. And she runs off to the workshop. <laughs> cool. Don't mind the talking robot head. Um, speaking of Nadara and the workshop, could I get a knowledge roll? And I'm going to say you can do galactic lore will give you the best information. Uh, technology will give you some information. Oh, hold so on it's up to you sheet. what you would like to roll. Oh, my sheet looks weird. There we go. Okay, you said galactic lore. Yeah, that will give lore. you the, the best information if you roll that one. Technology it will also give you some information, just not quite as much. You know what? I'm going to risk it for the biscuit, and I'm going to do galactic lore. Hey, that's actually pretty good. Okay, uh, good. So... In your research of kyber crystals and lightsabers and all of that, uh, you've probably come across not necessarily Sith lightsabers before, but some knowledge of them, perhaps. Uh, perhaps a uh, old data fragment here or like a, a physical tablet there somewhere in like a maybe an archaeological dig or something like that. Uh, so you actually know that that Sith lightsabers um, this is where we're deviating from, from Disney canon and doing a little more expanded universe canon. Uh, Sith lightsabers use a synthetic crystal. Uh, so it actually won't be a kyber crystal specifically in the lightsaber. Uh, functionally, it's, it's basically the same, uh, but it is a little bit different, and that is why it's red. Wait, so it doesn't have a kyber crystal in it? It has a crystal in it that functions the same way, but it's not specifically a kyber crystal. It's a homemade kyber crystal, not a yeah. brand kyber crystal. Basically, I, yeah. It's a knockoff. <laughs> yeah. I hate knockoffs. <laughs> she is going to... I feel like even though she knows this, she still has faith that someday she will find a red kyber crystal like it's like a fantasy like santa where you believe it but it's questionable um so she's still gonna break into the thing okay and when she realizes it's exactly what she expected she's gonna put it back together and like pout <laughs> <laughs> okay uh could i get a mechanics roll for for this operation Oh, this would be, this is an interesting situation we got here. Um, because I, I want to know if it still works when you put it back together. Okay, how's that? Uh, that's enough to take it apart. Let's do another one for putting it back together. No, I don't have good mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, okay. Uh, a nineteen. Um, there's a couple of parts left over. Uh, <laughs> she takes them and sweeps them off the table and kicks them under the <laughs> Uh It still works, kind of, but it's more like Kylo Ren's lightsaber, where uh, you know the blade's not super. Uh, I mean, it's stable enough to use, but it's it's like jagged uh, instead of that nice smooth, you know, column of light. <laughs> she goes, eh, it'll work, <laughs> and like turns it off and like hooks it onto her belt. She's not ever going to use it, but she thinks it's cool for aesthetic purposes. I mean, it is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like like some sort of regulator or something you, you forgot to reinstall with it. And so the, the blade is all weird, but it, it still works. She will. Um, she's still upset that it's not a kyber crystal, but she's going to go ahead and leave the workshop 
but she's not going to clean up after herself. Like there's definitely tools everywhere. Um, and she's just going to kind of wander until she finds people. <laughs> um, with that in mind, uh, Chai, uh, is Captain, was it Captain Roger? Is that what we named him? Yes, Captain Roger. Uh, cause he's, uh, like the, the old battle droid head. Um, do you have him programmed at all to like remind people to clean up after using the workstation or things like that? No. Okay. I, I imagine he's just kind of like, he'll just, he'll talk if addressed. I feel like that's what, that's where I've gotten with him is he'll talk if addressed. Okay. Uh, then in that case, Captain Roger does not say anything to you, Nadara, as you leave with tools everywhere. <laughs> um, and don't worry, I'll walk in there eventually. It's true. Uh, so yeah, it's going to take a, a little bit uh, to get back to the the Star Destroyer with the Mandos. Um, so you've got time to to interact on the ship if you would like to do so, uh, or send messages uh, like to the Mandos or to other people. Uh, you've got time to basically catch up on your emails, essentially. I, at some point during, like, here in a little bit, like, after after Nadara has left, Jai is going to go into the workshop to, like, reload the proton torpedo launcher, clean off his armor, heal up. Uh, and it's just, like, everyone else in the ship is going to hear a, what? Uh, Nadara comes running because she thinks it's danger or a kyber crystal. There are two <laughs> reasons why someone would say what that loudly, and those are the two. <laughs> <laughs> she will run towards both. Jai's just gonna like spin around. Some comes in, just be like, "Who?" and point at the workbench. Nadara's gonna be like, "I have no idea, but I'm gonna go check down the hallway." <laughs> And slowly back away. <laughs> could, could I get a deception roll from Nadar? <laughs> she goes, I think they went this way. <laughs> Wait, where is deception? There it is. Oh no, this is not going to end up well. Oh. Um, just for kicks and giggles, Jai, what's your will defense? 18? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh... Yeah, it's pretty much like, I don't know. I better check down that hallway. Uh, that, that's kind of like the impression that you leave. Uh, you are not convincing at all. Jai's going to like stomp over to his workbench and start putting all the tools away correctly and just going to like look at Captain Roger and just be like, I have to be polite to do to guests on the ship. Uh, hey, Nadar hey. Yeah. Go no, go. Nadara has when she sees that you go inside, because this is like a room, right? Oh yeah, it's basically yeah. like the hangar bay of our ship, which is the background on roll twenty. That's our ship. It's okay. like the hangar bay and the back part of it is a workshop. So there's a way for her to like sneak and peek in. Oh absolutely. Yeah, she definitely, as soon as you walked in there, is now like slowly walking back to like peek in and see what you're doing. <laughs> so you just see me like grumbling and like putting things away, like giving everything a nice clean. The helmet off, giving the workshop a nice clean. I have found the pieces under the table when I was sweeping up and I'm just like, Captain Roger, new directive. Roger, Roger. We're going to work up a script for when new people use the workshop. Just like a checklist of things you do and don't do in the workshop in the hangar. Objective recorded. Cool. I'll At get you that At this point, later. Nadara has walked in and she leans on something, but it's not quite, it's something that has something else on it and it totally like clashes to the floor. <laughs> And she's like, oh, who was that? And like runs. <laughs> Jai's just gonna like bang his head onto the 
onto the the workbench, just go like, I need to talk to my dads. I don't know how to deal with people right now. And he's going to like finish cleaning and then make a hollow call. Perfect. Um, that sounds like a good spot to take a break. Uh, so we're going to go take our break. We'll be back in 15 minutes. So go grab any uh, snacks you need, hydrate, all that good stuff. Uh, and then when we get back, we'll we'll have our, uh, our, our call and uh, meet back up with the Mandos. So we'll be right back.
welcome back and welcome in wowzers thank you so much for that raid i really appreciate it it's good to see you how did your stream go let me let me know in chat um so when we left off uh jai you were gonna have a a conversation with uh your dads right i, I don't know if this necessarily needs to be like an on-screen thing um totally fine jai is just jai needs to check in and get himself um back back leveled back out again and his dads always give really good advice uh because i feel like one of them is very much like the serious warrior dad and one of them is just like the no nah, man just go blow something up and that's you know between the two of them is the answer somewhere so okay uh i, th I think jai's probably just gonna like maybe like just mm. jai's gonna go hop into the the cockpit of the a-wing and call them from there. So <laughs> that's that? where Jai's gonna be for the next little bit of the trip in case anyone needs him. <clears throat> All right. Um, did anyone else wanna do anything before you get to the Star Destroyer? Yeah. Um, I have a question. Do, do they, they have a, like a map, right, of things? Yeah, there's there's like a, a galactic star chart. Okay. So um, Elsa has the star chart and she's like mark well however she marks like with a laser or something marking different places okay. and um where does ships where the imperial ships were that they blow up she's marked the big red x so she's like making a list of places she wants to destroy i i love that <laughs> And, um, not not concerning for everyone on the ship at all. No, but she's really happy. She's happily doing it. But she's got Duse on her shoulder. She's kind of humming. I don't know if that's better or worse. Oh man! <laughs> Just making her, her hit list of all the places that she wants to destroy, and I think she's going to. Um, just like over comms make a request that they could she's going to name the closest place on that hit list if they could go there and if she could have a close on for people please <laughs> okay um yeah let's say uh i'm trying to think of where would be closest on that route We'll just say random location in space uh, is yeah. is on the way. Uh, so so there is a request that goes to uh, uh, is it just to everybody on the ship or? Okay. Say so, hey, can we can we pull over and and blow up some ships here? Uh, feel can we? Feel free to respond <laughs> however you would like. Oh, Jai will see this pop up on his data pad and will just like ping Zadu and say, see? Uh, well, Zadu, is there an, auto can I put it on like autopilot? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's autopilot. So Zadu sees this and it's like, okay, guess the talk needs to happen now. <laughs> and basically goes to find Elsa. Okay. Yeah, she's she's happily doing her hit, making her hit list, trying to be efficient. That's why she wanted to get the next closest place. Yeah, so Zada just you know knocks on the door. <laughs> yeah, come on in. Just making my list. Oh, a, a list. What about? <laughs> oh, these are the places I'm going to destroy because they're imperial. Would you like some tea? Oh, this <laughs> place really wants to blow up. That has never been in this situation. Um, hey, hey, champ, hey, um, what? Why do you, you want to destroy these planets simply because they're imperial? Yes. What about all the people that live there that, you know, aren't necessarily part of the Empire, but more forced to be there? 
Oh, that's not my fault. No, it's not your fault. But we shouldn't blow them all up together with people who are doing but, wrong. So do we warn them? Would it send out a warning? I was thinking it's easier not to blow up the planet <laughs> when there are innocents on it. Well, not really, but I mean, we have to get rid of the problem, and I'm good at it. Oh, <laughs> like, oh. like maybe her eyes are like, you know, kind of look like she hasn't slept much. Oh, what's the last time you took a moment to, you know? break from all this um you know wanting to kill planets and kill people thing there's no time to take a break well i guess there is right now we're literally just flying through space no i'm making my plans you see if we take this route we can get the most in the least amount of time it'll fix everything it'll fix everything once you get rid of all of them? You know, killing the Empire, all the Imperials, killing all of them, I don't know if it solves everything. But we solve the big problem. What, what is the big problem? Um, I can't remember Raven, but it was she saw that Palpatine was alive, right? What? I don't know. I can't remember. I'm asking Raven. So, what was the question? Sorry. She said he was alive. Ilsa. It, it keeps cutting out on my end. What was the the first part of it? I think <clears throat> Ilsa saw that Palpatine was alive. Oh, uh, you, you know. I don't know if you knew that it's Palpatine specifically, but but like something like that, yeah. Something like that. That's what she's going to say to um, Cesaro. Okay. Well, it might be better to focus efforts on just taking out the one individual, taking out planets left and right, while certainly could be an effective method would also kill many people who, you know, have nothing to do with this. <laughs> we all have to make some kind of sacrifice. <laughs> you can't hardly care to do the ominous music. <laughs> Zadu's Z- 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 like, <laughs> <laughs> really going through it in his head. Okay. Let me phrase this a different way. You know how uh, pa- Palpatine Palpatine, right? You have Palpatine. Now, Palpatine himself destroyed a great many planets to achieve his goals. And you are nothing like Palpatine. Not yet. So that <laughs> So there's no reason I'm gonna skirt over that. So there's no reason for you to use his methods <laughs> to achieve a, a greater good. <laughs> I'll consider your options, and <laughs> she's like still making her plans. No, 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 no. Get some rest. <laughs> You look like you haven't slept in weeks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I think she's like, like clumsily knock something over and just like glare and then she will storm off to take a nap. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. 
they'll pick up after Ilsa. Oh, that's great. Zato <laughs> still caught, <laughs> just caught up on. You're not like Pal Palpatine, not yet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh... <laughs> 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 definitely got some things to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing some some parallels to Darth Cadus there. <laughs> uh, what they um, did to my boy. Yeah, Elsa's kind of leaning a little more dark side. Sorry. That's fine. No problem. I'm I'm here for it. Um, what's uh what what's Nadara and Anaka, uh, either and or both of you. Uh, doing on on the trip, aside from you know making a mess with tools. Nadara is so she. This is a new place to me. So she is like wandering the halls, just kind of getting an idea of where everything is, and like checking all the doors. And if they're unlocked, she's definitely going in and snooping around in everybody's <laughs> bathroom cabinets. And um, seeing if there are any lightsabers unattended, <laughs> things like that. Oh no. Um, just raises a good question. Uh, Ilsa, you have your lightsaber on you pretty much all the time, right? Yes. Basically glued to her. Uh, Anaka, do your, your original lightsaber, is that on you or do you keep that like in your room or something uh so anaka has the the fucking haunted one with her at all times yeah <laughs> uh but her her personal uh original lightsaber is in her room yes okay. uh, but her door is locked okay so. <laughs> that that good makes call. sense good call <laughs> <laughs> she has a lightsaber and holocrons in there. She's not leaving that shit open for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> not after a dog got in. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, there's two locked doors. Uh, as you're snooping around, does do those deter you, or do you try to try to break in? I mean, every good thief knows you don't hit the place the first time. Like, you gotta scout it out. Also, she's not, like, straight up a thief. Like, she, if someone leaves something laying around, then obviously they've left it to be borrowed um, and possibly not returned with all its pieces. But she's not actually going to break into their rooms. Um, okay. Will she look for an opportunity where the room is unlocked? Absolutely. Is she going to be the reason the room is unlocked? No, because you can't be blamed for people's doors being opened. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you're more the the opportunistic thief, not the breaking and entering thief. <laughs> Accurate, and technically, it's not thievery; it's borrowing. As long as I return seventy five percent of what I took. <laughs> I'm not sure that's exactly how that works, but okay. It is to Nadara. <laughs> if I take cake and I eat two bites, but give it back, technically, it's not stolen. <laughs> In the words of you know, every adult ever. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> okay. Um, how about Anaka? Uh, what's, what's Anaka up to uh, while you're in transit? So speaking of Anaka's belongings, uh, I can't remember. Did she ever look into both of the holocrons? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think you've really had a chance to, to really delve into them. Well, there you go. Now we've got a block of time. She's going to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember what all they were. I, I know there were two Jedi holocrons. Was there a, like a Sith holocron included in that? Or were they all Jedi holocrons? I can't remember what we did with that because it's been a, a bit. That is a really good question. Uh, wasn't there one of each? I feel like there might have been one. I don't know. I think there was one of each. Okay. And so, was it the um, was it the Jedi one that was okay to steal, and then the, the Sith one was not okay to steal? I think that's what one it was. Of, yeah. One of them had the temple location in it, didn't it? I, wouldn't that be the the Sith one? Maybe that's how we knew about the 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 Sith temple. 
I oh. also do know that Anaka did a force check while she was there and felt like a dark presence in that direction. So maybe it was that she initially felt it and the holocron provided the details? Okay, that would make sense. Uh, I was just looking through maybe? my notes and I, <laughs> I, I write down stuff that I think I'll need to remember and then it's never the things that I need to remember later. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to say that that because uh, there's three total and I believe you stole all three. All of them. The, all She took them and ran. Yeah. Okay. So there's two <laughs> Jedi ones. I was so mad at her. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's two Jedi ones and, there, and then, the, yeah, there's a Sith one. So. Okay. Which one would you like to look into? <laughs> uh, well, eventually all three of them, but let's start with the Sith one. All right. Let's do a use the force check. Okay. Just a moment. Come on, roll 20, don't fail me now. Okay, 32. Yeah, uh, you're able to get it open. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what is what is going to be on this thing? I wasn't prepared for, uh, for this specific event this evening. <laughs> Well, um, we can always come back to it if you need some time to think on it. That's yeah, okay. I, yeah. I don't need to know right now. <laughs> give me, yeah, give me a sec, but there, there's interesting stuff on it for sure. Okay, we'll come back to it. That's no big deal. Okay, and that will take uh, a good bit of time of uh, meditation and, and whatnot to access it and kind of learn everything there is on it. Um since they're not like it, holocrons are weird they're not like uh like a hard drive that you can just access the information on so it'll take a bit to work through it um <clears throat> so yeah well, we'll come back to what you learn uh i have a couple of ideas uh already uh but yeah let me flesh that out a little bit sounds um, good to me awesome uh at some point kieran does try to leave the room again uh <laughs> on this trip uh, Jai, Jai will, will be like, please, please hold, ma'am. And then we'll like page Anaka and be like, hey, um, I know things got weird and you needed some time for yourself to like meditate or whatever. Uh, could you make sure Kieran's not possessed? Yes, Jai, I will make sure that Kieran is not possessed. Thanks, best friend. <laughs> no response to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, then, Anaka, if you go into the room. Um, yeah, Kieran's just sort of standing there like, um, I'd like to leave my room. Uh, Anaka's like... Yeah, well, I'd like to not be called to your room to act as your warden, so Jai thinks that you might be possessed by something. I'm here to check you out, to make sure you're not possessed by something, then I don't care where you go. But seeing as Jai is a little paranoid about this whole situation, we'll take care of it, and then we don't have to think about it ever again. That sounds great, uh, Anaka. Um, how would you like to check me for possession? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm assuming because Anaka has Hetsuska, uh, perhaps she would know uh, what that feels like in somebody else. I don't know if she like uh, can use the force to just do like a quick probe to see if there's a second energy in there or something. <laughs> yeah, you, you can you can do something like that for sure. Um, and yes, the irony that Anaka is the one checking Kieran uh -huh. for possession is not lost on me. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, let's do another use of the force check and you can sort of like try to sense uh, something from... Do the... Uh, oh, that is a crit failure. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> So, so then, okay, I'll, let me uh, <laughs> play the devil's advocate here. Because Anaka knows what it feels like, perhaps there is a bit of advantage there that she would, you know, know what to look for. 
Um, I I'm going to do this a certain way that you actually will get the answer. Um, so you, you will still succeed, but there there's going to be a consequence. Um, oh, of course. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what? Is, is the consequence going to be funny enough that I shouldn't spend all of my channel points and give her an advantage? Uh, I think so. Okay, good. Have uh, fun. It's not going to be anything Thanks, like, like harmful to you. Um, okay. So you're. I'm not going to take like 10 points of psychic damage or something. No, you're good. Anaka is definitely going to have a headache, but it's not going to do like damage points. Um, okay. So you're able to reach out with the force uh, and. Uh, do some sort of like the Star Wars version of uh, a light mind meld. Uh, you know, you connect telepathically through the force um, and you kind of lose focus. Like It's almost like, like losing your grip on a, on a tool or something like that. Uh, and it just, it sort of slips. And before you can kind of catch it again, um, it causes this like sort of, feedback loop thing and so you both just get a, a sudden headache um but the the uh other downside to that um is that kieran is suddenly keenly aware of hadzuska <laughs> in your okay. head <laughs> i was very prepared to say hey give me my possession back <laughs> <laughs> I thought Hatsuka was going to go brain hopping for a moment. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so Kira knows uh, that I have a, yeah. a a little buddy hanging out in there. Okay, and that's you, fine. <laughs> you basically just have this moment of like the Spider-Man meme of just staring yeah. at each other and like this silently, okay. you know, s silently saying like, I know. And then, you know, you're like, you know, uh, sort of the expressions <laughs> on your face. Yeah. I picture it like the the two eyes uh, emoji, <laughs> just like looking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she she's aware of it, and and you are aware that she is aware of it. Okay. Uh, Anaka does absolutely nothing to address this situation. <laughs> she just pretends it's not there. <laughs> Kira just kind of goes. Like, so so. I'm not possessed. Are, are you good? Oh, I'm I'm perfectly good. But you're not possessed, so that's the important thing. Yeah, that's um, that's that's important. Yes. Um, okay, I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, All take, right, I'll take care yeah. of something. Um, sure. I'll yeah. tell Jai that you're not possessed. Also, you, you know, I I can I can tell Jai. I was actually going to go tell uh, Jai about a project. So, um, about I, a project, I, huh? I can go do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you do that. You tell him that I gave you the seal of approval and whatnot. So, sounds good. Um, yeah, you could go take it easy. Maybe you know, take a nap or something. I'm I'm quite good. Thank you for your uh, your concern. Uh, but uh, yes, you absolutely run along to your project. All right, uh, and she sort of like backs away before turning around <laughs> <laughs> and running to the hangar bay. Um. So, uh, Jai, uh, how long would you say your your call is with your your dad's? Um, okay, so here's what it, here's what it actually is, is he calls, he calls a, a random uncle, like someone else in the family to just like bounce a quick question off of them, make sure he's not overreacting on things. <laughs> then he calls a different aunt and then he calls his dad and goes like, okay, this uncle said this, this aunt said this, I remember my dad my father saying these kind of things what's up and then the conversation begins in earnest and like i think i think it honestly depends on if they're on a job or not okay like 
like having Jai just calls in. Like he doesn't like ping them and be like, is it a good time for a call? He just calls. And like <laughs> at this point, I think it's just how the family works. Like at some point when we're in the middle of a firefight, I would not be surprised if you just like, hey, your dad's calling you and be like, oh, okay, cool. I'll deal with that. Hold on, dad. One second. Gotta take a shot. Uh, that's just how we, that's just how we are. It's why Jai is the way he is. Uh, so I feel like this is like just a, an, an hour or two of conversations happening. Okay. Okay. So probably right around the time that you're, you're wrapping that up. Yeah. Um, there is a, a very alarmed looking Kieran uh, that just sort of like the, the, the hand slaps against the, the uh, canopy first. And uh, then you so, can see her face as she like pulls herself up. So Jai like opens the cockpit of the A-Wing, has his dad like on a hollow projector on his wrist thing. So like there's another Mando who's just like standing at a tree and just like occasionally like lobbing grenades out of a grenade launcher at something <laughs> during this conversation. And so he's just like, hey, hold on, dad. A possessed Jedi has to talk to me. Uh, what's up? Uh, um, hi, Jai's dad. Um, he like salutes on the screen and then just like ducks as like the tree disappears above his head. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and she just looks at you like, so um, I'm, I'm not possessed. Uh, Anaka checked me out. Cool. Um, while that was happening, um, we had this sort of connection thing uh, through the force. Okay. Uh, Anaka's possessed. What a rat. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Jai uh, just looks at Kieran. Hey, Dad, I have to deal with a possessed Sith now. Um, so you just <laughs> send that thing to, to Bevan and get it to me. Yeah? Cool. Bye, Dad. Uh, oh, bye. Uh, Kieran, like, waves. <laughs> bye. Because <laughs> she's awkward like that. Okay, so one, you're not possessed, but Anaka is possessed. I think so. Um, there, I, I don't know if it's like total takeover possessed, but there was definitely more than one, like spirit, for lack of a better word. Uh, when Anaka and I uh, connected. <sighs> I, I I don't know what it is. I th this wasn't my department in force training. I do li fancy lightsaber stuff, not mystical mind stuff. Oh, actually, that raises a quick question off to the side that may determine how this conversation goes in okay. a different direction. Um, when I was cleaning up and I found those parts that Nadara had just like chucked under the workbench. <laughs> From my time working on Kieran's lightsaber, would I know that they were lightsaber bits? Um, or were they just random bits? Like, were, more would they have been distinct enough that I would have been like, did I forget something? More the latter, but um, but given how much Jai has fiddled with lightsabers, you might know that, like, hey, those look like they could go in a lightsaber. But it wouldn't necessarily be like those are definitely from a, a lightsaber. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Then, then I won't be bringing that up. It's just like okay. Um. Huh. Uh. And he just like it calms. No, no, he doesn't. He just goes okay. You're gonna be mad at me if I don't treat her the same way I treated you, at least in kind. I should be even handed with everyone in the crew. He just like knocks his he helmet against the side of the cockpit. All right. One second. Hey, Naka. Okay. So she's not talking to me at the moment. <laughs> cool. I'm, um, I'm guessing. B had to step away for a second. No, sorry, my whole Zoom froze. I apologize. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! It was perfect, actually. Like, even odds, you still don't reply. Okay, but what did you say though? I just said, I just got on the comment like, 
Hey, Anaka. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> she knows what Kieran did. She's not yeah. fucking answering. <laughs> <laughs> I, call, I know. Okay, so yeah. she's not talking to me. Good. Uh, so she knows you know, then. Yeah, it did probably. Um, I, you, you don't have to, like, treat her a different way or whatever. I just want to make sure that she's okay. Cool. Tell you what, she's going to think you're a narc now. So have you met Zadu? You haven't met Zadu yet, have you? Yeah. Just say hi to Zadu in the cockpit. We, and, you we know, had a, like, a great conversation when I first came on the ship. Um, and I oh, mean, you did? Oh, right. When we rescued you from the Sith dude, from the fish bait. It, yeah, that that one. And I, I mean, I'm I'm not a Jedi anymore, but some habits are hard to shake. So, I mean, I imagine she probably expected I was going to uh how did you put it narc yeah yeah that's i feel like i feel like this should have been a given probably cool all right i'm gonna fix that uh did you need something else you cool we good we all right you feel okay i just you got shrank darted and that's never fun yeah uh, i'm awake and everything now i just feel really drained yeah, there was some weird stuff on that ship. Maybe like do like physical like checklist thing to see if like you got force magic somehow. Not possessed, because I believe you. But like, I don't know. Maybe that Sith did something. He seemed weird. Oh, that's a great thought. Um, I no, I'm kind of hoping you would just say no. There's no such thing as that. But I don't get to live in a fun world. I didn't mean that. Yeah, there's always forced stuff that could happen with someone like that. Do you know what my life was like before Bevan recruited me for this mission? A lot less complicated. I just did jobs and shot things and blew things up. My armor never got scratched. I never once had to repaint this armor. Admittedly, I am the product of a clone commando and an awesome lady. So, you know, I'm just naturally better than most people. And yeah, I didn't have to worry about weird force magic stuff. Uh, Kieran's just giving you this sort of like amused smirk, uh, just as uh, as Nikki put it, the, the ego, just sort of watching. Uh, I, look, it's been a while since Jaya's felt this confident in this place in the world to just be like, yeah, I am better than you. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> um, it kind of lets you go on for a little bit and then just says, so what you're saying, it was a lot more boring. Well, it didn't have nearly as many fun people involved. See, there you go. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, BT dubs, because you were a little bit imprisoned when I did this. Um, I may or may not have made the Jedi think that uh, we left those stolen holocron. He pauses for a second and then doesn't include the plural uh, on indoor. You know, where the big fleet was. So... In a day or two, you might just want to, like, reach out if you have any friends there and see how that's going. She just sort of does the, the like, what blink for a second. And it goes, you did what? If they get in a war with the New Republic, it gives us time to build our strength back up and take back Mandalore while they're distracted. And then Saxon looks like a fucking idiot. Oh, okay. Um, yes, making Saxon look like an idiot is definitely the priority here, Jai. Uh, hey, I did shoot him out of a window. It was, he wasn't, it, he wasn't <clears throat> talking. He was saying things and he wasn't explaining. Karen, he just kept going, I'm doing it because there's something worse coming. And he didn't say what? What, what, what context was the worst coming part? that he was working for the new empire thing under the creepy evil dudes because something worse was coming and because it would let him be a proper Mando again. But you know, since he's being an idiot about it, I disregard most of it. 
and he never told me what was coming. Okay, that's that's a lot to process. Um, You're welcome. I'm going to go meditate for a little while. I, I will talk to you later, Jai. Cool. I'm going to go see if my best friend is possessed in a bad way. Okay. <laughs> she just sort of like, you could tell like everything is just way too much to process right now. Uh, she's very overwhelmed as she just sort of meanders to her uh, room. See, here's the thing about Jai. Jai has figured out some of the people on this boat. He knows that the best way to deal with Kieran is to just throw a whole lot of spaghetti at that wall, and eventually that wall will go meditate about it. Uh, <laughs> You're not wrong. With Anaka, the plan is exactly what I'm about to do next. Oh, no. So Jai goes to Anaka's room and just knocks at the door. It takes a minute, but she opens it. She doesn't look impressed. I just need a yes or no. Are you in control? Yes. Groovy. Cool. Hey, uh, Kieran knocked on you. Don't be mad. She assumed you expected the worst. <laughs> there wasn't a single doubt in my mind that Kieran was going to rat me out uh, yeah. just by the way she was looking at me and backing away slowly. So. Well, I think I she suddenly expect- realized that there's an Ilsa and two Sith on the ship and well, three. Uh, Gracus. Uh there's an Ilsa, a Gracus, and you and your ghost friend. So, you know, she realized she was slightly more outnumbered than she was a minute ago. Ilsa says she's not a Sith. I said you were an Ilsa. Okay. <laughs> Regardless of Karen's feelings uh, or how outnumbered she is, there is nothing wrong with me. And there hasn't been anything wrong with me, and there will not be anything wrong with me. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Let me know when that changes. It's not going to change, Jai. Yep. Good. I did. I hope it doesn't. I feel like, and the, Jai just the... like. Go oh, ahead. go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, you get the strongest eye roll you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Jai gets serious for a second with this part. Like, he takes in that eye roll and just goes, yeah, I know. But this is like, if you lose control, that's a bad day for both of us. Okay, best friend? Look for help before it becomes a bad day. If I need help, Chai, then I will let you know. But I'm telling you now that it's not going to be the case. Cool. Hey, you want to know something real fun? I have a feeling you're going to tell me anyway. So sure, what's something fun? I threw the Jedi at that black fleet. Okay. (laughs) I told them the stolen the holocrons were there. So they're going to go investigate and they're going to find the empire people and it's going to be great. And we're not going to have to worry about any of them for a little bit. Anaka kind of leans against the door frame and like crosses her arms very slowly. She's like, you know, Jai, sometimes you might have a good idea here and there sprinkled in between all of the absolute batshit crazy that you tend to, you know, spew at any given moment. But you're definitely getting better at plans. I like this one. That's almost a compliment. And besides, you can't deny the results. Just like somewhere on the ship, something breaks right at that moment. (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) Uh, Anaka just laughs. Like she, it's a genuine laugh. Like she thinks that's funny. Side note, during all that conversation, uh, Anaka, Hadzuska in your head is going like, ooh, I'm going to possess you. Yes, I'm going to take over control and destroy the ship. Yes. (laughs) That's totally how this works. I love Hadzuska, and I think he's a sorely (laughs) underutilized character in the grand scheme of things. He doesn't have to be Uh, a dick about it, though. That's his whole personality. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Um, I think he's fucking hilarious. So <laughs> we should use him more for absolutely no reason. Uh, yeah, no, Anaka doesn't acknowledge him because she's trying to convince Jai that she's not in a bad spot. <laughs> I feel like just randomly starting to talk out loud to the voice in her head is not going to help her case. So. <laughs> no. And that's actually, Hatsuska, I think, has kind of gotten a little bored at this point. So that's exactly what he's trying to get you to do. So he just sort of keeps talking to you with things that would normally like elicit a response. Uh, and just, just keeps doing that to try to get you to, uh, you know, yell at him while Jai's there. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's like a twitch every now and then, uh, just like Anaka <laughs> almost losing her cool. Uh, but then going back to, like, nothing happening. <laughs> yes, give in to your hatred. Good. <laughs> it's usually the response. I, I feel like mentally she, like, zones out from something that Jai says for a second. She's just like, if you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to vent the goddamn lightsaber straight <laughs> out of this place. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, okay. Uh... Well, then, after all of that, uh, those interactions, um, you eventually do arrive back at the Venator, um, which, uh, if everybody is cool with, uh, perhaps has been named the Mythosar. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, uh, er everything's fine. Uh, they, they finished the, the, the paint job on it, so it's got the nice Mythosar skull, like, down the whole top of it. Um, and they've got the weapons installed and everything, and it's actually like like fully functional and staffed and uh, everything. It's it's good to go. Um, so now that you're home, essentially, what's what's the first order of business? Oh, it's for sure. Uh arranging a tour of the ship for Nadara and Zadu uh, telling that it will include telling Bevan the good news that Zadu is not dead and we got him back and hi this is our new friend Nadara awesome which also I guess leads to letting them choose their quarters wherever yeah there's plenty to choose from um how about for uh, Zadu and Nadara? So, uh, Zadu, what, what's your first order of business after arriving on the ship? Uh, well, Zadu was in captivity for a while. So I think sort of the openness and uh, having Mandalorians around him, he's sort of just basking in it. <laughs> really basking in the feeling. Like, not really home, but being around his people. Very cool. Um, what about Nadara? Nadara! Hmm. She's gonna go along with the tour. Probably when she finds, um, like, her quarters, like, chooses wherever she's gonna stay. Um, she's definitely going to make sure that, like, it's super locked. Um, like, rigs some weird stuff to where no one can actually break in because she, knowing herself, would, you know, um, borrow things. And she doesn't want her things borrowed. Um, but beyond that, I think that she just kind of wanders still. She's still kind of getting a feel for everything. And it's a new place. And she's very curious. So she's just kind of doing her own thing okay very cool how about uh ilsa ilsa is well she had a good nap but now she's just like standing somewhere staring at people <laughs> <laughs> okay uh it, creepy kind of I was gonna say, is, is this the I'm really cool and I'm just gonna stand here and watch people kind of staring or like the thousand yard I've seen some things kind of staring? <laughs> a thousand yards, she's seen some things and um, probably um, not doing so well staring. Okay. Um, 
there, there are probably some NPCs that, that take note of that. Uh, so th they might talk to Ilsa later. Um, anybody else on the crew is also welcome to, uh, I, I would assume, notice that and say something. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sorry, were you going to say something, Par? Oh, Ilsa, Thousand Yard Staring. Yeah. <laughs> that certainly snaps Anu out of, uh, out of the mood. Sorry. <laughs> probably, um, like, probably like halfway down the hallway, and I was like, nope. Turn, turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Elsa. <laughs> Why don't you help me find my new quarters? I think you choose a really great room for me. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to, like, walk towards the quarters silently. <laughs> Yeah, before he follows, Zadu definitely has the like stressed out parent look. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll touch on that uh, later. Uh, Adnaka, what what is your your first order of business after getting on the Mythosar? Sorry, sorry, I heard you, but I was bounced out for just a second. <laughs> Came no back worries. At the exact wrong time. Uh, can you just go over what we're doing again? Sorry, uh, now that I'm back. You're good. So you're back on the Mythosar, uh, the the Star Destroyer. Right, um, right, right. So what is Anaka's first order of business? Oh goodness. Uh... <laughs> trying to avoid everybody who thinks she's possessed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is, but nobody else needs to know. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't think there's really anything in particular that I wanted her to do or, or accomplish right now. So, yeah, she's probably just avoiding eye contact with Kieran and Jai. <laughs> to be fair, Kieran's probably avoiding eye contact with you as well, so that works. You know what? I changed my mind. Anaka was initially going to to try to ignore Kieran, but now that she's seen that Kieran is specifically trying to ignore her, she's like, "All right, you know what? <laughs> Never mind." Uh, because we all know that Anaka is a brat like that. Uh, yeah. So she keeps trying to like approach Kieran. <laughs> yeah, Kieran is super uncomfortable. So that that's fantastic. Um, oh goodness. All right. Well, I think that's a good spot to to wrap it up. No terrible cliffhanger. Uh, this episode will give you a break from that. Um, but uh, next episode, we'll we'll take care of those first orders of business for for all the different characters, uh, and perhaps we'll we'll even find a nice uh, you know ocean planet with a, a nice beach for people to you know, take a break on since it's been nonstop death and destruction and uh, stealing holocrons and sith and things so we'll we'll see what happens next week uh we're going to go on a raid here in a moment but before we do i want to let everybody say what their favorite part of the uh the session was where we can find them and anything they'd like to share or plug we'll go reverse order from the the intros so uh par uh what was your favorite part where can folks find you and anything you want to share or plug Oh, um, favorite part. Um, you know, I, oh, I think, I think this was really Jai's episode. I think I, any moment involving Jai was very, very entertaining uh, this time around. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I love talking a lot, so also just another great moment uh, for me personally. Um, 
You can find me on Twitter at uh, Par Professional and at Mr. Par 4 e You can find me on Twitch when I stream once in a blue moon uh, at Mr. Par. Um, you can find me next on Saturday. Saturday? Saturday. For Animus Violences. All right. Um... Next, let's hop over to Matt. Uh, what was your favorite part? Where can folks find you? Anything you want to share or plug? Oh, boy. Oh, man. So, so much fun. So much fun today. Uh, favorite part? I don't know. I had a very, they were all very good. No, no. You know what was? You know, the favorite part, favorite part was, was the, um, it, there, there were two moments that kind of, that kind of tied. It was Nadara trying to be very cool about making a mess of my workshop tied with, uh, Zadu being the dad to Ilsa, <laughs> like going into parent mode on Ilsa. <laughs> Those were both very good. And I'm so excited to see what. Like how Nadara plugs into this team and and like how Zadu is going to try to help Ilsa through whatever is going what, what's going on and helping her grow through all this. Because this is what what is happening with Ilsa is going to be a, it's a lot of fun to watch and it's gonna probably be like some of the best stuff in this story, I feel like. So that was my favorite bit. Uh, you can find me next uh, here on this channel on Tuesday nights where I GM one side of a Dragon Age campaign that spans Tuesday and Friday nights, uh, or Tuesdays and Fridays. I think it's Friday afternoon, isn't it? Uh, Friday at noon Mountain Time, yes, yeah. the, the Friday game. Uh, so um, yeah, I GM the Tuesday session uh, where the team just got out of a pirate island and it's going fine. It's all fine. Everything is fine. Uh, and you can find me on my Twitch channel, Fifth Draw Live, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. Uh, we've been we've been having a good time. We played through uh, Forgotten City, which is better than a Skyrim mod turned into a full game deserves to be. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I have a podcast called Hard Reboot, where me and two friends take a public domain property and give it a fresh coat of paint. And you can find my Etsy shop at Forge of Destiny, where I make a bunch of custom props, including lightsabers, including uh, some that are going to be in a giveaway here on the ch on this channel soon. You could win this. Or a different one that I'll show you all next week. So you have to tune in to see that. Uh, this is an Inquisitor lightsaber model that I made. So uh, check that out. And that's me. Awesome. Uh, next, let's hop down to Jordan. What was your favorite part? Where can folks find you? Anything you want to share or plug? I have a favorite part, and it is this sentence. I'm going to go call my dads. <laughs> <laughs> Killed me. I love it. Um, I also, though, I loved everybody's reaction to the explosion. That made my heart. I feel like it was very identifying of who everybody was. Um, but anyways, my name is Jordan, a.k.a. Sassy with Sander on all social media platforms. I am the creator of your sparkle cloaks, um, your dreams come true, because evidently the world needs sparkle cloaks. Um, you can check that out on Etsy. Um, at Red's Wardrobe. I'm going to slap myself in the face while I'm saying this. Uh, just kidding. Um, what else do I do? Oh, I'm probably going to start streaming soon. So watch my Twitter for info on that. Um, other than that, this is my only TTRPG thing for now. And I'm loving it. So Awesome. Uh, next, let's hop over to, uh, to Nikki. What was your favorite part? Where can folks find you? Anything you want to share or plug? All that good stuff? No. Um, I can't remember what I want to share or plug. I and I had a favorite part in my head, and I completely forgot what it was. Oh no, no worries. Um, oh, what? 
I said it was really good. It was a really good part too. I just don't remember. I I had a particularly favorite uh, Ilsa moment with the um, star chart and crossing things off of it. That was one of my favorite Ilsa moments. <laughs> that was fun. Like, if you part that I cannot read. <laughs> Uh, if you if you think of it, um, let me know before we, we go on the raid, and uh, we'll we'll swing back to you. So uh, let's hop over to to V real quick. What was your favorite part? Where can folks find you? Anything you want to share or plug? Um, there are always so many good parts when it comes to Thursday games. Uh, by the end of it, when when the end rolls around, I'm not quite sure what to pick. <laughs> Um, I definitely loved the little scene with uh, Anaka and Kieran and <laughs> just like the Spider-Man meme of like, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, and then Kieran immediately ratting her out to Jai. Of course. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, Anaka knew she was going to do it. Uh, we all knew she was going to do it. So uh, Jai just showing up and being like, hey, you good? <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. Uh, and then just Zadu, like, trying to uh, basically sheepdog Ilsa uh, into a into a more comfortable place. And just be like, hey, why don't you help me with my shit this time? Uh, let's not think about, you know, what you've got going on. Maybe if you don't think about it, you know, out of sight, out of mind, uh, which is great. And I am super excited to see how Ndara fits into uh, into the group and uh, how how things kind of shift to include her in the shenanigans and, and uh, all that good stuff. So yeah, I, 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 so many good parts. There's always the whole session is the favorite part. Um, as for where you can find me, I will be here on Saturday evening for Animus. Violentus. Yes. I'm so used to saying absentus that it just sometimes I'm like, <laughs> uh, yes, Animus Violentus, uh, where I play Alice, who is a familiar name. Uh, he's popped up quite a few times during the absentus episodes, uh, so it's really fun to be able to play him now. And uh, he and our little friend Skeeter are caught up in <laughs> a bit of a situation, so that'll be fun. Uh, as for where you can just find find me generally, uh, I do have an art Twitter. So if you'd like to take a look at any of my stuff, you can certainly do so. Uh, and the art Twitter is at Pepero Draws. That's Pepero like the candy. Uh, there's not been a whole lot updated there uh, recently. I just got a new laptop, so I'm hoping to get back into some digital art soon. But I've got some pencil sketches and some old art up there, so you can take a look. But yeah, that's it for me. All right. And okay. yeah. I thought about it. It was with um, the arm light to try to light a jai. Sorry, it broke up again there. Like really Something about jai? When a, when a Dara lied to jai about messing up the um, oh. work area and like took <laughs> off money. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, I thought it was funny and it's like a good kind of energy and something else for the newly um, responsible Jai to <laughs> deal with. <laughs> Oh, that was great. Excuse me. Jai and Great Kids are going to have their hands full. <laughs> Not Great Kids, Zadu. I'm characters up, I'm sorry. I, I was, Jai and Zadu are going to have their hands full. I was doing that so much last week. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, Awesome. Uh, and then where can folks find you next? Um, I'm, I think I'm doing something tomorrow. I don't remember where. But I on Saturday, uh, I am on Polish Cryptids channel, and this week on Sunday, I am in two different games on over in TPK Roleplay. Nice. And I think that's where it is. I'm, I'll, I'll put it on my Twitter, Jamie Pot seventy five seventy five. All right, awesome. Um, I think that just leaves me. Uh, so my favorite part. Um, the whole thing was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed watching everyone's reactions to various things. Um, and uh, yeah, Zadu and Ilsa interacting was was really good. Uh, I really enjoyed that. 
And uh, anytime Anaka and Kieran get to like actually interact with each other, I it's I always enjoy that. It's so fun seeing the contrast between those two personalities and how they interact with each other. Um, all the stuff that Jai did uh, with trying to keep like herd the cats uh, and make sure everyone was okay, and and then also you know get out safely and everything while still blowing things up. Um, it was neat seeing seeing Jai like definitively with the captain's hat on, so to speak, uh, this episode and, and really trying and and hating it. <laughs> um, that, uh, yeah, specifically the moment in the A wing where he like hit, hit his helmet on the the side of the cockpit, like like oh, I hate this. That that was a lot of fun. Um, and then yeah, Nadara. All of the Nadara chaos was just delightful. <laughs> I loved all of it. Um, let's see. So uh, where you can find me next uh, today is Thursday. So tomorrow at noon Mountain Time for Dragon Age. Very excited for that. We uh, we just got into the um, I forget what it's called, but it's it's the sort of pocket dimension uh uh, roadway that is on the other side of the Alluvians in Dragon Age. Um, I think there's like a, a specific word for that place, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. But that's where we got to, um, and we got uh, we got Anina in uh, last week, uh, and she's playing a really interesting character. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I get to play a um, a, a punk rock uh, gray warden mage um, who got like pseudo kicked out of the gray wardens uh for being a pain in the ass basically <laughs> um so it's it's a lot of fun i highly recommend coming and watching that and hannah does a fantastic job gming that um so yeah that's that's friday and then saturday at 6 p.m mountain time for animus violentus i'll be gming that uh as well and that's it for this week uh other things to share or plug we've got our sponsors uh which are going to be in chat here which are fundamental RPG. It's a simple D20 system, not tied to any genre. You can use it to play any style of game that you would like from high fantasy to, to uh, sci-fi and everything in between. Uh, if you want the physical copy, you can pick that up on Amazon. Uh, if you prefer the digital version, you can pick that up on coffee.com slash Raven, like it's spelled at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and then Die Hard Dice. Uh, you can find their stuff at dieharddice.com. They sell amazing metal and polymer dice sets and accessories, uh, including... Uh, I didn't actually get a chance to roll it today, but uh, it's what I've been using for most of the rolls this month. This Winter's Embrace Dire D20, it's a really large, heavy metal D20. It's just incredibly satisfying to roll. I highly recommend checking that one out. Uh, the link to that's in the chat. Uh, if you use the code BLACKFEATHER, it's all one word with a capital B. You can get 10% off your order. And again, that's dieharddice.com. Uh, and then if you want to catch up on this show or any others that we have on the channel, you can do so at the Fantasy Network at watch.thefantasy.network. Uh, aside from that, other things to share or plug, uh, I am organizing uh, the games program for FireCon this year, uh, which is coming up in November. Uh, so if you are interested in attending that, uh, or if you are in uh, the gaming industry uh, in, in any capacity from, from amateur to professional and would be interested in presenting there, uh, that is a possibility. Shoot me a DM on Twitter, uh, at the Raven, like it's spelled below my face here, uh, and let me know. Um, and I will we'll see if we can, we can get you in, uh, or at the very least get you information on how to register so you can attend. Uh, it's going to be an online convention about uh, writing, art, and gaming, uh, and how you can get uh, involved in those things. Um, and it's really cool. So it's a it's a good time. Um, it's online only this year. I've been to some of the physical ones in the past, and it's been a it's always been a good time. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so that is another thing to to share. Um, and I think that's it for me. So we're going to go on a raid. We're going to go raid uh, Bright Dystopia, who's just a fantastic. Uh, person uh and streamer and a lot of fun to watch and interact with uh looks like they're playing some phasmophobia so go say hi give them a follow if you're not doing so already and i will see you all uh tomorrow bye everybody <laughs>